up, we have another <laughs> of my fantastic colleagues at Zybridge here, Daniel Bogofsky, who is going to talk to us to introduce uh, Zio Parser. Uh, parsing is something else that we very frequently have to do in our applications. There are some existing solutions out there, but there hasn't been one that is fully Zio native, takes advantage of all the same approaches to problems, to operator names, to typed errors that we're all used to. Now there is, so yeah. I will let him introduce it. You just uh, told my presentation's first section. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I would like to talk about uh, this new parser library called Zio Parser that I was working uh, on in the past uh, year a little bit. Uh, first, uh, just a few words about why a new parser library, why, why create one more. Uh, then I will, <coughs> I will talk a little bit about uh, the features uh, or how it feels like. And finally, a few words about its current status. Is it usable or not or uh, what's left to be done? So, why create one more? Yeah, I have to watch the screen because I can, uh, it's not mirrored. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, why create one more? Because when, when the Scala ecosystem already contains, I don't know, tens or 20 uh, different parser libraries. Uh, Zio Parser itself is an invertible parser combinator library, which still doesn't make it unique. But uh, yeah, I wanted to experiment with the idea of of uh, making the invertible parsers, which I will show very soon what, what it means, uh, as convenient as possible. Um, while keeping the possibility to fall back to a parser or pretty printer only uh, version in case you reach the limits of, of the invertible parsers. Also to, to have a parser library that has the usual zero feeling or the, or the usual operator names the covariant uh, variants, variants of the type parameters, integration with zero types, um, good error reporting because that's something that I was I was not happy about uh, with some of the existing parser libraries, and still have some uh, good performance, good enough performance. So yeah, I was interested in whether I can create something that that satisfies all these these points and uh, that's why I started experimenting with this. So let's see how it looks like. Uh, first a simple example of, an, of, of a simple expression uh, language with addition and subtraction operators and, and uh, as the operator type and the expression is either a constant value or applying this one of these operators recursively to the expression. So this is how the parser looks like. Uh, I don't have time to go over it. But uh, here's an example of, of an input string to be parsed. And uh, the expert is, is the, the zero parser here syntax for this expression language. And we can parse it. And uh, what makes it, uh, what is the invertible in its name? is that uh, when you are building these parsers, you are also building a uh, pretty printer at the same time. So uh, you can also use this expression syntax to, to print back, to string the parsed ADT. So if we run this, we will get the parsed uh, tree data structure of the expression. And if we print it back, then we get back the string or something very similar. Um, if we try to parse something which is not parsable by the grammar, uh, it's probably not visible, but I replaced one of the operators uh, to, a, to a star character, which is not part of the grammar. Uh, then we get back an error, and we can uh, pretty print this error in a, in a way. It, it contains enough information to create nice error reports. It tries to show where the error is, and it tries to tries to give you all the branches that it was trying, and, and even some kind of of parser stack with named, named fragments about uh, where is it in the parser. So, so this is the nicer error reporting or an experiment to do a nicer error reporting. Um, otherwise, it feels like other parser combinator libraries, uh, there are familiar things like uh, digit, repeat, string, whatever. 
Uh, one difference is that uh, you cannot just map your parser because it's, uh, it's, it has to go in, in two directions, so when, when you transform, you have to provide a function from, uh, from one direction and, and the other as well uh, in order to make the printing work. Um, okay, we don't have time for the code, sorry about that. So let's see what the syntax type looks like. It's, uh, it looks like this. <laughs> it uh, describes the parser and the printer together. Uh, type parameters are a typed error channel. It has an input and output uh, for input of the parser and output of the pretty printer. And value is what you can print out, and the result is the result of the parsing. So, yeah, we have also some real world examples migrated to Zio parser. There is a Lucene query parser that I originally wrote with cat's parse uh, at CoraLogix. It's migrated to Zio parser and, and it works. It, there is an example of a string that gets parsed by it. And an example of, of, of the error reporting is not that nice as, as the previous example because uh, it's just a direct transformation of the of the cat's parse parser and, and uh, well, still it, it shows where the error is at least. And another example is, is the Caliban's GraphQL parser, which we migrated, and uh, that also works. I put an example of, of how it looks like if you print back the GraphQL, it doesn't look nice, uh, because it doesn't have any new lines. Uh, that's, the reason for that is, is that uh, we only migrated the parser with the goal to verify that the parser works, so it has to be adjusted a little bit to, to make it also printable, but it's not a, not a big, big deal, actually. Uh, this example shows that uh, the error reporting is aware of multi-line inputs, so it shows that the error uh, is in the fifth line and uh, at the beginning of the line because uh, I replaced some kind of GraphQL keyword to struct, which is not a GraphQL keyword. I don't even remember what it was, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so, about a little bit about backtracking. Uh, there are different parser libraries have different approaches about whether they require manual backtracking annotations, uh, which is usually good for better performance, yeah. or doing automatic uh, backtracking. Zeo parser does both. Uh, in case of automatic backtracking, it backtracks on each branch. By, uh, and what's interesting is that. This is only like a syntax sugar on top of the uh, parser DSL. So even uh, when you define the parser, it gets translated into explicit backtracks. So it's your choice, whatever fits better uh, the actual use case. Uh, streaming and pipelining. So if we take a look again on the type, and especially the input type parameter, if that is a character, then we can have a high-performance string-based parser. And, uh, and yeah, we can uh, use it as part of a, a Z stream as well as a, as a pipeline if we want to repeat the parser multiple times or, or as a sync if we just want to parse the input and provide an output. And if it's not a character, then mm, we can still use it in a stream like we can have a Z stream of the input type and run the parser on that. And uh, we can also imagine that by connecting a streaming pretty printer to a streaming parser, we can create new syntaxes. So in this way, we can plug together these different, different uh, syntax values. So what happens if uh, we have something that is not expressible with this syntax type? Uh, here's an example, which I, again, once again, cannot really explain. But uh, we want to go through, uh, we want to parse something like a XML-like grammar where, where every open tag has to be followed by a closed tag with the same name as, as, uh, as the open tag uh, contained. And uh, yeah, we can start by defining these syntax fragments. If we can define the open tag, we can define a closed tag. Uh, by having syntax types, but then we don't really, we cannot really go forward because uh, there, is, there is no flat map on the syntax type uh, because it doesn't make any sense with, with the pretty printers. 
But what we can do is that uh, we define just the parser by moving from syntax to parser. Uh, still, we can use the already defined syntax types in our parser. And we can also define a separate pretty printer where we can pattern match on the inputs so uh, we can express our, node, our recursive node printer uh, in a different way than uh, what we did with the parser. And uh, then we can tell Zio parser that uh, we take the responsibility that the parser and the printer for, for the node type are actually the inverse of each other. And, uh, and it, it uh, trusts us and we get back a syntax with, which we can then use in, in, in future. Uh, so we, we can continue defining syntaxes and uh, compose this fused syntax uh, into bigger blocks. And uh, here's an example of the error reporting of this uh, grammar. So, uh, final thing that I want to talk about is that uh, we can also think about some pretty printer related features. One thing that I, I uh, want uh, is indentation support and had once in the past actually. <laughs> Another is what we can think of is syntax highlighting because we can use these name definitions, for example, or any other kind of attributes that are used for the error reporting and already part of, of, of the syntax DSL. Uh, we can use the same thing, for example, to define a, a color mapping for the printer, and this is an example that was printed from the first uh, expression language example where that it has different colors for the different uh, uh, bars or elements, or syntax elements. And uh, the library is also capable of uh, print, printer-only use cases. Uh, for example, the repository contains an example of a full bash pretty printer, which it doesn't contain a, a bash parser, so it, it doesn't really define syntax types for, for dealing with bash scripts but it defines a pretty printer. It's just an example of, of how to work with, uh, with the library if you only need printing. It's easier to define pretty printers than, than uh, full uh, syntaxes. So the, these were the features that I wanted to show. And uh, finally, just a few words about its uh, status. It's an experimental library, but it's published. It's ready to. Uh, use for all Scala versions and, and platforms. It's using the latest ZO2 version. And uh, yeah, the streaming stuff that I mentioned was part of my original prototype, but it's not in there right now. Right now it only works with strings. And the pretty printing is something that I did for this presentation and I will push it next week probably to the <laughs> repo. Uh, yeah, and the syntax highlight and the indentation are also things that were, that are kind of works or worked in the past, but it's not on the main branch right now. So that's it.